Good morning. It's great to see all of you here. Uh, and as Jim mentioned, uh, I did spend uh, 15 years at Red Hat uh, before in their very early days. And so when Jim was going through a lot of those uh, S1 filings and a lot of the concerns, I remember those days uh, very, very well. I'm actually also going to start with a little bit of a, a history uh, from back in those days. Um, the CEO of uh, Red Hat at the time uh, was a guy named uh, Bob Young. He was one of the two co-founders of the company. Uh, and back then, he used to have this very, very famous quote and analogy to introduce the concept of open source uh, into uh, enterprises and to different customers to explain why in the world should you start to care about this thing called uh, open source. And the way that he would uh, describe it is, you know, would you be willing to buy a car with a hood welded shut? Uh, and this was an analogy that really stuck with a lot of people uh, and really helped them understand, you know, why is it important to be able to look inside your software, be able to make changes, because just as you would not buy a, an automobile uh, without the ability to service your engine or to be able to make changes or to understand what was going on, similarly, you wouldn't want to have the same effect uh, when you went ahead and acquired software. Uh, but there's one thing that uh, the sort of uh, assumed, uh, which is that when you go ahead and use software, or open source for that matter, uh, you would be acquiring software in order to own it and in order to possess it. And that dynamic has changed a little bit you know, over the last few years. So we've had the rise of cloud computing you know, over the last uh, you know, 10 plus years or so. And I think the question starts to change uh, regarding what is the value of open source in a cloud world. Because when you take a look at you know, the question now, it really becomes something like, you know, would you order an Uber or a DD car uh, with the hood welded shut? Uh, and we've moved from an ownership model into a renting as a service model. And now as we start to shift into this kind of dynamic, a lot of people start to care still but a lot of people don't really care what's going on in the car anymore because they don't own it, they don't buy it, they just use it as a service. So we still have a lot of projects like Kubernetes and OpenStack where people can look inside the cloud, but they're starting to care less and less uh, from an enterprise and from a customer standpoint in terms of what's actually happening inside the cloud itself. And then now, more recently, you know, with the rise of clouds and all the different services that you have around artificial intelligence and gaming and databases and so on, you know, this is really like asking, you know, would you order a self-driving, personalized, entertainment-providing, turbo-boosting you know, automobile uh, with the uh, hood welded shut? And I think at this point in time, very, very few people care at all in terms of what is going on inside your cloud because you're just consuming all these very, very rich services. Uh, and whether it's built on top of open source or whether it's built on something else, it doesn't matter so much to the end user. They just want to consume these rich services from a cloud standpoint. And so I think we start to uh, need to take a look at what is the value of open source in a cloud world, and what are the new kinds of questions that become important to ask uh, in this new industry? So the key question is no longer, you know, would you buy a car with the hood welded shut, or would you order an Uber uh, with the car welded shut? But you we have to start asking, you know, do you want to live in a world where only Uber and Didi can offer you transportation services? And that's the new open-closed question that we need to start thinking about from an overall you know, industry uh, standpoint together. And just to make that very explicit, you know, do we want to live in a world uh, where there are only fewer than you know, 10 clouds around the world that can offer all the digital services that we want to consume? And it's a big challenge for our industry. There's obviously been a lot of conversations you know, in the press and uh, social media and others around this. But I think this is the key question that we need to start engaging with from a cloud services world. And what do we do from an open source standpoint? And what do we do from an industry standpoint? Now, let me dive into this a little bit just to talk a little bit. What are the actual challenges that we face from an industry uh, in terms of coming together to be able to build a lot of these cloud capabilities? And there's really two kinds of challenges uh, that I think we need to address. Now, the first kind of challenge that we need to start to address is uh, something that uh, you can think of as lock out. You know, people often think about lock in uh, when they talk about cloud as a problem, but I think lock out is an actually bigger problem. And the ecosystem, hardware providers and software providers are fundamentally locked out of being able to create native managed services inside of public clouds. So just as an example, 
Now, if you go into any public cloud around the world today, uh, they'll typically offer you a software image marketplace. This is where you go ahead and you buy all the third-party software that you want. So I've just got a few examples up here from you know, some of the people in this room, like MongoDB or Red Hat OpenShift or SAP you know, uh, and so on. But basically, if you want to go ahead and use their software in the cloud, you run it on top of a virtual machine service, you buy the machine image, you deploy it uh, so you can hear click to deploy, view the deployment guide, you know, launch the machine image. Basically, your IT operations team has to go ahead, download it, configure it, manage it, operate it, and take overall responsibility for the life cycle of that software. On the other hand, you can also go into all the different public clouds around the world, and you can consume that exact same capability as a managed service from the providers themselves. And so, the big challenge for a lot of the software vendors is that they don't have the capability to create these managed native services inside the public cloud because they're locked out and restricted into these various kinds of offerings. So when you, an IT enterprise you know, customer taking a look at, well, how do I want to go ahead and consume capabilities from a cloud? I can choose between taking ownership, but there's a huge operational cost and expense and hassle, or I just consume the same capability as a service. And so the cloud providers have an incumbent advantage in terms of how do we go ahead and start to give these capabilities to our customers in a much better and a much simpler way. And so the ecosystem is fundamentally locked out from being able to do the same things and offer the same technical capabilities that the cloud providers themselves are able to offer. Now, what a lot of software providers are then doing is saying that, OK, we know that our customers don't want to be in the business of operating and managing the software ourselves. So we'll go ahead and build a software as a service on top of these public clouds. And a lot of these same companies are building out these SaaS applications that run on top of the public clouds. And so again, here are just four different examples across the open source spectrum uh, with SAP and Red Hat and MongoDB and you know, Confluent and so on. Now, the challenge with a SaaS application is it still doesn't fundamentally solve this lockout problem. Every single one of these four SaaSs runs across the same public cloud. But if I'm an enterprise building an application across these four SaaSs, I'm going to have a lot of challenges in terms of how do I incorporate all these four SaaSs into the same enterprise application, even though they share the same infrastructure, because these four SaaSs are going to have different billing systems, different identity systems, different networking spaces, different storage systems, and so on. And so if I want to compose an enterprise architecture across all these four SaaSes, it's a lot more complicated than if I use the direct native services that offer the same capabilities on the public cloud because they share the same service engines and they don't have any of these same limitations that SaaS applications have. And so the ecosystem is fundamentally locked out. I can either build an image uh, in a marketplace, or I can build a SaaS application. Both approaches are severely limited compared to what the native services and the public clouds themselves can offer. The other half of the problem that we have to take a look at is lock-in. So a lot of enterprises are going after a multi-cloud strategy uh, today. Uh, and so that means that they want to be able to run workloads across multiple different public clouds. And one of the challenges for going multi-cloud today is that uh, enterprises, as they go multi-cloud, they fear lock-in. And a lot of them start adopting this least common denominator approach. Uh, so what I've shown here are just uh, some of the compute services across uh, three different public clouds, uh, in this case, AWS, Azure, and Huawei Cloud. Uh, and you can see that you know, even though they all have a lot of different rich compute services, they only have two sets in common, uh, virtual machines and Kubernetes. So that means that if I want to start to take advantage of a lot of these richer capabilities in the public cloud, I fundamentally tie myself into that one public cloud and make it more difficult to adopt other public clouds. Conversely, if I want to go multi-cloud and adopt least common denominator, I have to worry about, am I getting the full utilization of my public cloud capabilities? And is my competitor going to start using a lot of these capabilities that I'm withholding from myself because I've decided to go multi-cloud? And so there's no service portability across these different public cloud architectures. And so customers are forced to choose you know, between two different bad options that they don't really like. And when we take a look at lock-in, you know, we're all here to talk about open source, and open source is a wonderful thing. Uh, and I'm a big, big believer in open source. But service lock-in is not a problem that open source by itself can fundamentally address. Uh, just to illustrate this, 
On the left-hand side, uh, you can see, you know, from a traditional software development model, you know, how we go from code creation all the way to commercial products. And so if we take Linux, you know, we're here at the Linux Foundation uh, uh, conference. Uh, we've got these developers who write in the upstream community. Then we get these community distributions, you know, like Ubuntu and Fedora and Debian and so on. And these are the places where everyone in the community has access to the software capabilities to do with whatever they want uh, and wherever they want. And then downstream from that, we have a lot of these commercial products uh, where people can go ahead and buy it when they need, you know, different capabilities like support or certification and so on. When we move to the cloud services world, we don't have that same dynamic. We go straight from you know, a really popular open source project like Kubernetes, and the first time that you can consume it as a service in a cloud is when one of the commercial providers decides to enable it and sell you access to that, uh, and they only deliver it to you the way that they have built it out. So this whole community access uh, capability around services is absent. You know, no matter what you do in open source, it doesn't address the distribution and availability of services from a public cloud standpoint. So these are the two sides of the challenges that we need to start to think about. You know, if we want to address a lot of these challenges, people are, you know, have been thinking about in terms of how do we deal with open and how do we deal with open source in a public cloud world. On the one hand, you're dealing with lockout because you know, enterprises and customers are not able to bring in and build the same kinds of capabilities that the service providers themselves can. On the other side, you have to deal with lock-in uh, because you don't have service portability and open source is not enough to give you what you need. So this is why I think that we need a new approach around how do we do open and public cloud. And I'm calling this open services cloud. Uh, and this is in contrast to open source software because I think what we need to do is to fundamentally open up the service layer inside public clouds so that we can start to build out this services ecosystem in an open and in a community way. So there's three things that I want to highlight across what we're hoping to do from an open services cloud standpoint. The first thing, if you look at the left-hand side, is we need to address this lockout problem. Now, over here, I've shown uh, just a high-level diagram uh, inside uh, the Huawei public cloud uh, for how do we actually build managed services in our cloud. Uh, so in the yellow, uh, this could be any uh, public cloud service. So for example, our artificial intelligence services, or a database services, or a container services, and so on. And in the blue are all the enabling services that are internal to Huawei Cloud for how do we take software and turn it into a native managed service inside the public cloud. So these are things like, how do I do billing? How do I do identity management? How do I do console access? How do I do deployment? How do I put it into the service catalog, and so on. And these are all private in our own cloud at Huawei. These are private across every single public cloud in the world right now. But one of the things that we are uh, now working on is we are going to open up third-party equal multi-tenant access uh, to these APIs so that anyone will be able to come into the public cloud and have the ability to create a native managed service in the public cloud, no different from what the cloud provider themselves can create. So this is solving the lockout problem. We will open up access into all the capabilities inside a public cloud so that if you want to build a software as a service model, that is truly native and no different from any other public cloud service, you will for the first time have access to these kinds of capabilities in the public cloud. That's dealing with the lockout challenge. The other challenge we have to deal with is lock-in because we don't want uh, this to be you know, just a single public cloud solution. And we also know that for all the software vendors that are out there, you don't want to be in the business of writing to a whole bunch of different public cloud you know, native service engines. So we are also working to create an open source framework what this framework will do is that it will sit on top of all the different service engines so that as different public clouds make available access to their internal service engine APIs, we can broker across that and provide a single open source framework that enterprises can write across. So now, if I'm a software vendor, uh, I write my software application to that framework once, and I can deploy that as a native service across different public clouds. So we achieve, achieve true uh, multi-cloud service portability for the first time in the industry. And this is where we solve a lot of that lock-in problem. I'm not afraid of going into different public clouds because the services are actually portable at the service level across different public clouds. So that's how we address the lock-in challenge. And finally, uh, 
How do we make sure that this is an industry initiative and something that we can build together in the community? This is where we're working very closely with the Linux Foundation to be able to create a new foundation around the open services cloud uh, and also a lot of this open source work to drive everyone coming together to build this from an overall industry standpoint. So this is what we're looking to do as part of Open Services Cloud. We need a new model in terms of how do we start to address these challenges of open source, software, access, and uh, adoption in the public cloud, and also for open source itself. How do we start to make that much more valuable and usable in a public cloud? And this is the way that we can start to put the open source community in control of how do you actually deliver end-to-end -end services versus just being the building blocks that somebody else takes to be able to power their commercial clouds. Now, as part of this uh, dynamic, what we're looking to do is to evolve the public cloud uh, from a model today where it's really a closed platform into being a truly open market. Uh, so if you look at you know, public clouds today, uh, you know, they're really split between the marketplaces that they offer as well as their own native service catalog. If you go into the marketplaces, uh, you can consume a software image or a SaaS application, as I highlighted before. But if you look at the service catalogs for the providers themselves, uh, you know, this is where they offer all their good native managed services. In our open services cloud model, what we can do is we can unify so that everything becomes a cloud service from third party or from first party, and everything becomes a unified catalog of cloud services across the provider. And we also change the dynamic in terms of how we work with the ecosystem and with our customers. So today, you know, software vendors, hardware vendors were largely locked out uh, from uh, public clouds, but in the future, we can all become partners in terms of how do we build services together from a public cloud. So it's no longer just you know, the provider themselves that are able to build services together, but everyone can do it in the community. And customers are not locked in uh, because the services are only proprietary to that one cloud provider, but we can achieve true multi-cloud service portability, and so that opens up the ability to, for customers to be able to deploy multi-cloud and hybrid cloud wherever they want. And this is also fundamentally shifting the value summary of what we do from a public cloud standpoint. Uh, so today, you know, public cloud is really the place that I go to in order to get that cloud provider's you know, own services. In open services cloud, we can flip that to say, cloud should be where I get everything as a service. It doesn't matter who the provider is. The value of cloud is that I've shifted over to this service model, and I want to consume everything as a service. I don't care so much about who is the vendor behind that service. I just want to build my business in the best way possible. So another analogy, uh, just to sort of explain this, uh, you know, if you remember back in 2007, uh, when the iPhone uh, first launched, uh, there was no App Store at the time. And this is an actual Apple advertisement uh, from back in 2007, where they said that if you want to be able to build uh, applications and run third-party workloads on your smartphone, the way to do that is through web apps and multi-touch. So remember, third-party applications, you could only build a web application and access it in mobile Safari. Uh, but if you wanted to get the true native experience on the iPhone, you either had to be Apple or a partner like Google who could deliver something like YouTube or Google Maps onto the original iPhone. And that's sort of the world that we have in public cloud today. You know, it's a closed device where only the cloud service providers ourselves are able to deliver these native workloads across the cloud, and everyone else is restricted to these you know, second-class experiences. You know, in the case of cloud, software images, or SaaS applications. But if you fast forward you now to today's you know, public cloud, uh, you know, we can evolve that to become much more like today's smartphone market, where today, Apple has their own app store. If you go into the Android world, you can even install multiple application marketplaces onto the same smartphone. And third-party applications, first-party applications run no differently on the device itself. And so we've switched the smartphone from a closed device into an open market for all these different applications, from the providers themselves, the device manufacturers, as well as from all these thriving app developers. And we can achieve that same dynamic from a public cloud standpoint by opening up access to say, how can we all work together to be able to build native managed services in the public cloud versus just restricting that to a very small handful of cloud providers in the world today. 
So this is something that we've been uh, working uh, with uh, in the Linux Foundation for a little bit now. Uh, so uh, we had a, a kickoff uh, workshop in Hong Kong uh, with a number of uh, companies. Uh, some of uh, the people who attended that workshop are here in this room today. Uh, and we talked a lot about uh, you know, what are the challenges that we see in common uh, and what are the challenges uh, that we would like to solve together in terms of how do we create cloud services and help work with our customers today. Uh, so this was just one slide. Uh, Accenture was there, and so I took a picture uh, of one of the uh, presentations that they gave around you know, why do they see open services cloud as beneficial. Uh, but I've only had 20 minutes uh, to discuss with you, and this has been a long-running conversation we've been having in the industry uh, as well as with Linux Foundation. Uh, so tomorrow afternoon, uh, we're going to have a whole hour session. Uh, this is not on the website uh, yet, so I invite you, if you're interested, take a picture of this slide. Uh, but tomorrow from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, in Moss Beach, uh, we're going to have a much longer time together uh, where we'll be able to go into a lot more detail in terms of what are we trying to do around Open Services Cloud, where are we already in the process, and where are we going uh, from a roadmap standpoint. So this is something uh, that I would welcome all of you to come and work with us and to discuss. Uh, we think that this is something that is really, really beneficial for every single you know, person you know, that's here in this room today, because this is a way to amplify uh, the power and the value of open source as we bring it into public cloud. Uh, and so we're looking to build this project and this community in the open, you know, working with Linux Foundation, and we invite all of you to come and work with us as part of this process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.